Hello, in this demo, I'm going to show you how to start your first ASP.NET web application. To start your first ASP.NET web application, we need to download Visual Web Developer Express Edition, which you'll be finding it out on Microsoft website for free. If you install Visual Web Developer, you'll get it in your start programs. Microsoft Visual Web Developer 2008 Express Edition. Click on it. As usual, whenever we create a new project, we need to go for File and New Project. Whereas here, we will be going for New Website. It is going to prompt me a window where I will be selecting ASP.NET Website and I will browse it to a particular folder. where I want to put my project file. So I'll be just browsing to projects, Macquin laptop, Macquin through the trainer, this I'll browse it to ASP.NET. I'll say OK. I'm going to store my project in ASP.NET folder in my first project and I'll say OK. Now let's have a quick walkthrough on all the windows that we have in our visual web developer and all the files that we get by default, all the folders that we get by default. So you might have seen default.aspx page here. Now I'll just close this. I'll go for view and solution explorer. Now this is the window that we are going to work a lot with. If I close this, I can get this window back from view solution explorer. Now if you observe this window, this is our solution in which we can have projects. So I have my project as my first project in which by default I get a folder called as app underscore data, a web.config file and a default.aspx page. You may see this plus symbol just beside this file. If I click on this, it is going to explore and it is going to show me one more page called as default.aspx.cs. Now this page is called as code behind or I can call it as my code page. Now I have got two pages, one file, web.config file and a folder. Now if I double click on this default.aspx page, now you can see that it contains some script like HTML or you can say it is an XHTML script with at page tag we call it as attribute we call it as directive we call it as page directive you can see that we are working with c sharp programming language and code file is default.aspx now the file is one but it has got three views or you can say three looks one is source view this is what we are seeing and the other is design view like in source view if i write something hello and if i switch to design view it shows the message here so your page is going to render in this way i have a design view and a source view and i have one more view called as split view where i can have both the views like source is here design is here if i change anything it is going to reflect up there and if I change anything it is going to reflect down here fine so these are the three views of a single page these are not three pages it is a single page with three different views I'll save this now let us switch to design view save this now this page has got a code page for this like any 
code or any programming that I want to have which is related to this page I can write it in default.aspx.cs page so default.aspx page code I can write it in default.aspx.cs I can just double click this I'll get the code behind now if you observe there is a kind of inheritance now my class name is the page name so every page or every web page is derived from a page class which is present in system.web.ui namespace this could be an important interview question and I get an event that is nothing but page underscore load we will be exploring all these things very soon I will just save this now these are the things that we have a solution explorer window which is uh, very very important for us and another window that is nothing but toolbox you can find it on the left so I got this toolbox window where we have various controls standard controls data controls validation controls navigation controls login controls web parts ajax extensions and html controls so i have all the tools available here if i lose this window i can get it from view toolbox again this is an important window initially we will be working with standard controls then we are going to work out on data controls, validation controls, navigation controls, login control, Ajax extensions. And we are not going to work with web parts in our video series. Now, if I drag and drop any control, say I am dragging and dropping a button. I want a button on my page. So what is it I can do? I can simply drag and drop it on my page. I will get the button. Now whenever I drag and drop any control, my first and foremost thing that I should do is name it. You drag it, you name it. This is what the standard that you need to follow. Whenever you drag any control, you should give a proper name to it by following basic naming conventions. So we will be going through even that throughout our course. Just I will right click and I will say properties. I am going to get a new window that is nothing but properties window. Now I'll close this solution explorer. I'll select the button. I got the properties window. If I lose this window, I can get it back again from view properties window. Now in this properties window, I have various properties related to this button. I can set the color. I can set the text. I can set the font. I can do anything which is related to this button. Now I need to set ID, which is very important. I'll say btn submit. So if you are naming a button, you need to prefix it with btn. These are the coding standards that we follow normally. And the text on the button, I will just change it to submit. And the four color, I will change it to some reddish color. And the back color, I will just change it to yellow. So this is how I can set all the properties which are related to my a particular control. So I can drag and drop any control. I can set their properties with the help of properties window. But the important property is your BTN submit, button submit. That is what we have given. ID is the very important property that you need to set for every each and every control, whatever you drag on your page. So this is all about your first application now I'll just if I want to execute this I can just click on the green button it is going to pop up with uh, some message to me I'll just say okay so as of now let us ignore this thing now we'll see all these things in our future classes so I got my page output hello world with a button so that's it it is very simple to start up with asp.net web applications thank you very much mm -hmm.